Well, hi, and welcome again to our morning devotional. I am exactly certain where two out of my three kids are, so I figure we have a couple minutes and we can look at God's Word together. This morning, we'll be looking at Psalm 8. Now, Psalm 8 really turns the corner from the previous five psalms we've looked at. Psalms 3 through 7 had these strong themes of lament and the psalmist crying out for God to deliver him. But now we find ourselves in Psalm 8 in which David is just blown away with awe for God. Now, if you want to look at the structure of the psalm overall, it is really bookended with David being in awe. And in the middle, he looks at the recognition and responsibility that God has given humanity. So let's look at Psalm 8 together. Verse 1 reads like this. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Now, the first word that David speaks is the special name of God, Yahweh. And what that means is it has a presence to it, a present sense to it as well, that God is with you, the great I am. But it also looks to the future. What it really communicates is God saying, I will be with you there in power. So no matter where you are there is, God is with you in power. And what David, when he looks around at the heavens and the earth, he just sees the majesty and grandeur of God. Verse 2. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. Now David is moved in awe of how strong God is. So strong that when God makes a stronghold, he uses children and infants. What that I think means is no matter what your team looks like, when you add God to it, you have a winning team. That God can use children and infants to protect and create a stronghold. That's how strong God is. Verse 3. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place. David is taking time to just consider the creation of God. He's looking out and he's seeing the complexity and the vastness of the moon and the stars and the works of God's fingers. He is just blown away with how immense and big God's creation is, which tells us about God. God is big and vast and powerful. But in the setting of that bigness and vastness of God and God's creation, David makes this realization. In the midst of the moon and the stars and the heavens. David says, What is mankind that you are mindful of them? Human beings that you care for them. Now, one commentator said this about this juxtaposition of God's vast creation with humanity. He wrote this. He said, In contrast to the enduring natural elements of the world, we humans come late on the scene, live fragile and troubled lives, and depart quickly. The contrast couldn't be more clear. And yet, God pays special attention to us. Even the word that is translated mankind here means weakness and frailty. And yet, humanity is the apple of God's eye. God cares for them and is mindful of them. All those words really mean that God is just lavishing attention on you, that he is doting on you, that he cares for you so much that he holds you as precious in his heart. In the vastness of God's creation, God looks at humanity with special love and attention. He's just blown away with that. So David starts with awe, and now he realizes he's in awe of the recognition God gives humanity. But that's not all that God gives humanity. It's not just recognition. He gives humanity responsibility goes on in verse 5 to say, You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. Now, that doesn't sound like much responsibility yet, but there is responsibility. See, to be created and crowned with glory and honor is to have the image of God, is to be created in the image of God. And that means that uh, we share some similarities with God. And to be an image of something in the ancient Near East, meant to represent them. So humanity, being created in the image of God, represents God to the world. 
I don't know if you've ever knew that you had that responsibility. That because you are created in the image of God, you help remind the world around you of what God is like, a big and vast and powerful, and yet holding humans in his heart. What an incredible responsibility God has given us. But it doesn't end there. You have made them rulers over the works of your hands. You've put everything under their feet. All the flocks and herds, all and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the sea. What the psalmist is saying is that everywhere he looks, he sees areas that God has given humans responsibility for. To serve and protect and bring out the full potential of God's great creation. So we are not just representatives of God's in the world. We are co-rulers with God in the world so that we can steward God's good creation that he has handed over responsibility to, uh, to us. But last, so we've seen that David starts with awe. He looks at the recognition and responsibility that God gives humanity. And then he ends with awe again. Verse 9. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. David ends where, we, where he began, blown away that we know the name of God, the God who is majestic in the heavens and the earth. And so my hope for you is that you have some time to be in awe of God. Now, maybe in this COVID-19 pandemic we're in, you still feel in over your head with complete busyness. But maybe you have some extra time on your hands where you could try to get yourself in a position to be in awe of God. See, awe always comes by way of an experience or an acknowledgement of something great. And this is an opportunity for you to have an experience with God, that one who is the great I am, the one that is with you wherever you are in power. Or maybe you could acknowledge that God is the creator of the universe. Maybe you could acknowledge that God is the creator of you, the person that he is highly recognized and given great responsibility in his creation. So my hope is that you have some time to put yourself in a position to be blown away in awe of God, just like David was when he wrote Psalm 8.